Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So I know that I'll get a few comments about my Christmas tree and why it isn't decorated. It will be, it was just set up a few hours ago. And probably by the next video you'll be seeing it will be decorated. But, um, <laughs> if you heard that, that was my cat. He's just, she's just going crazy. But today's video we'll be talking about um, why, you can tell it's different to format. We'll be talking about why this past warm November could indicate a chilly December and why in years past with the La Nina it has favored a cold December so we'll be talking about that just basically a for fun video and if you're new to this channel hello and welcome I do everything relating to the weather I'm a hobbyist enthusiast and um, if you guys like this video check out my other videos see if this channel is for you and uh, you can always like the videos that helps out a ton alright so as I was mentioning we'll be talking about uh, why this past November could be uh, indicating a, a cold December. So first off, I want to demonstrate to you what this past November was like. So you can see this is from the 1st through the 29th. The 30th wasn't available in this catalog or catalog, um, this uh, analog data. And uh, so, you know, I mean, one day isn't going to make much of a difference for a 30-day anomaly um, map. And notice that this is obviously ranging. The blue colors would be below average and the uh, Orange colors would be ab ab above average, and notice, I mean, much of the United States is above average, if not, um, you know, all of it, excluding portions of the West, and you can see portions of Northern Canada, uh, sort of, uh, Northern Central Canada, uh, seeing those uh, slightly below average temperatures. But basically, what's the takeaway, as many people have experienced, it was a warm November, it was a really hot November, especially across the Upper Plains. Okay, so what has this meant in years prior? So, in order to look at that, we have to look at a few years. So, I actually did some research, and what I did it based off of uh, may have been a bit flawed, right? But, um, I know that a lot of people are from the Midwest, and so this is uh, what I did. So, I looked at the National Weather Service for Chicago, and I looked at the November rankings. I looked at some of the warmest Novembers, as 2020 will range in between these three. I don't know exactly what the official measurement was, but I think it was 46.5, so it would be between 1934 and 19, uh, 2016. So not the hottest November, which was 1931, but definitely a record, um, you know, definitely way above average. And notice that uh, we have quite a bit of years. So what I did was I took the La Nina years that were hot. So for example, 1909 uh, fits into that, right? And I looked at them. Okay, so what did 1909 look like? Well, what I did was I took a look at 1909, and you can see this is how this looks like. We took, we knew that 1909 was a warm, warm uh, November, right? And I don't know regarding of how warm it was to the whole um, United States, and I couldn't e load it on this website since this only goes out to 1948. But what I did was I looked at 1909, sorry I've said that like 10 times, 1909, November, and then I looked at December, and I tried to see where just, you know, the following December of 1909, November landed, and you can see right there, 1909, 21.6 average, normal was 27, so it was way, way below average, so that was one year where the, you know, the tables completely flipped. Now let's take a look at, say, 1904. Another relatively warm La Nina year. You can see right here we have 1904. Again, not a record breaker, but significantly above the normal 40.3, which is really right around here. And let's take a look at what happened with 1904. We go back into the December time frame. 1904 is uh, placing, um, well, you know what we could do just to make our life easier. Well, I found it on accident. You could do CTRLF, which I have been doing. Search is basically easier. 1904, notice 26.8, slightly below average. Now, again, because this year has been so warm, sorry, because November has been so warm, even in normal December would be a quite a big sh of a shock. And obviously, a much below nor uh, the normal December would be a, uh, a significant shock, to say the least. Um, and that may be the case. Again, the Climate Prediction Center and uh, sources like, sorry, I'm looking around here, like, you put up like that Christmas tree, right? And the cat has been going floof crazy. Um, I would have uh, shown him to you, but he just ran away. Um, but regardless, what I was talking about is that, um, well, what was I talking about? Holy cow. Um, 1909, 1904, uh, all these years, these old years. 
All right, I remembered. Um, we were talking about the Weather Channel and the CPC uh, Climate Prediction Center not agreeing. They think it's going to be slightly warm. That may be the case. It looks as if the first several days of December may be warmer, but then afterwards there are some pretty strong indications it may get cooler. But again, those indications may be wrong, so we'll have to see. The Climate Prediction Center uh, you know, is, is good at what they do, but not perfect, and I think everybody should know that. And... Uh, um, let's take a look now at some more years. So, 1917, another year that, according to this November, and you may be, you may be looking at this and being like, oh, why, why aren't you, you know, plugging this into uh, your graph? Why aren't you uh, showing us the? Sorry, Mark. Why aren't you showing us the temperature anomaly on this thing right here? The thing is, again, it only goes back to 1948, and this year, 1917, that I have pulled up is um, one that is uh, not in that catalog and just to preface those 1917 all these years that I uh, picked right are La Nina years they were varying in strength but they were La Nina years and I'll show you in just a minute some years that did not hold true so 1917 let's take a glance where was this um, most likely within okay right there 1917 43 degrees for the month of November that is you know, moderately above average. Not significantly, but not slightly in the moderate range. All right, let's take a look at what happened during that December time frame for 1917. We'll do, oh, well, look at that. I'm having luck with the numbers. 22.4, uh, you know, it's just a bone chilling of uh, December. And I obviously don't remember that, and I don't think anyone would from this channel. You'd have to be really, really old, but um, definitely... Um, possible but um 2020 uh 22.4 degrees as an average and almost 27 so again went from a warm to a very cold cold december and you know uh, it may be possible this year so let's take a look now at uh, say 1999 so that year it held true in a, just a bit of a lesser um way so 1990 uh yeah 1992 1999 um let's take a look and search for this i don't want to take a too long of a time trying to find the year stumble around it, it was a very warm year to say the least 1999 right there 45.1 I remember um, that was my year the year my sister was born and my parents always recall that fall being very nice and warm and that holds true you could see 45.1 degrees a very very warm November in terms of the December uh, anomaly and how that looked like it wasn't a bone chilling December right but again it's similar to this year in the fact that it went from an absolutely you know really really warm December or November to a just slightly above um, December so again this wasn't a cold December but it did get colder you know it went from above average to slightly above average and that may be the case this year and I just want to preface that uh, Really, on this title, I uh, want to include that why this year may be more snowy or why this December may be more snowy rather than cold. There is going to be an abundance of precipitation, right? And, you know, during the winter, there are plenty of times is with the Gulf of Mexico. You don't need the coldest of temperatures to be present. And the years that have uh, they had warm Novembers usually followed with either cold, moderate uh, Decembers. They were usually pretty snowy. And the... The greatest example of this was 20, or in the recent history, the greatest example, 2017 to 2018. I made a video in 2017, late Thanksgiving week, it was around the 27th of November, and I made a video how the warm temperatures now may mean a cold, uh, cold December. And that actually uh, managed to hold out very, very well, so it was one of like my earliest uh, astounding successes. I mean, my only one, I'm kidding, but one of the uh, bigger ones, and uh, again, that December, it was like, I know in Chicago, the New Year's was just absolutely miserably cold. I don't think it broke above zero. But um, again, so let's just show you some years that it didn't hold true. 1939, into portions of Chicago, or yeah, let's look at Chicago, 1939, November, let's just demonstrate to you. 1939 was a bit warmer was it ridiculously hot no not at all um but let's take a look at some other or let's take a look now at the december of 1939 and if we do a quick search we would see that uh, december turned out even warmer so again um, in this case november was warm for 1939 just like this year it was marginally warmer but it was and december turned out warmer and there was uh, based on my research right there was one, two, three, four, five, six years, six La Nina years that held true. 
um, where uh, it was a warm November and then a cold December. And then for La Nina years, that it did not hold true. There was, uh, you know, a, uh, a warm November and a warm December. Now, there was many more La Nina years, right? There wasn't just 10. But the other years did not either have a warm November or, uh, yeah, they did not have a warm November. It was colder, which this year was not, and that excludes it from our data. Now, I want to give us uh, give some brief or, or more recent examples of some non-La Nina years that have had, had this. So, say 2009. 2009 was a non-La Nina year, but had a very similar trend to what we have uh, going on this year. So if I were to plug in 2009 into my uh, anomaly graph, you, we would see similar results. So let's take a glance. As I mentioned, November 2009 was a very warm month. And again, I have been using these uh, Chicago numbers, right? But I just want to show you that it usually stays similar um, to the rest of the country. So say September or sorry, um, November of 2009, if we were to search it up, it was also warm for Chicago, one of the warmest ones, 2009, and if we were to look at the composite anomaly, sorry, right there, 2009, and now December, you saw a brief little quick thing, the December that followed 2009, November, was this, much cooler, a bit warmer towards the Arctic by Hudson Bay, but again, much of the United States cooler, or at least average, there were several big snow systems. It was a, a mid-December blizzard, I think, that tracked across the country. I mean, it was a, a eventful, win uh, eventful de uh, December, and really, it continued to be eventful. I think it was full of nor'easters, three nor'easters, and one that just absolutely pummeled uh, the mid-Atlantic region. Now, again, that probably won't happen. The odds of that are very low. They're, they are there, but again, this was an El Nino year, so this holds true whether with a La Nina or El Nino. Um, but the reason I chose La Nina for my first set of results was because I wanted to make it the most familiar with uh, this year and not, you know, make it skewed um, by making it El Nino. But just to show you that, again, six out of the 10 La Nina, 10 La Nina years applied to a warm November, and then out of those six, a cold December followed, and four didn't for the Chicago area and much of the Midwest. Now, I can't apply this to much of the Southeast and to portions of the Northeast because a lot of these years are, again, be uh, before 1948. But um, I did have 1962, and I just want to show you that that is one of the years that did hold true. And if you were to look in Chicago, 1962 was a warm year. And uh, I can't really find it on here. I will in just a minute. Okay, time to use a CTRLF search. Again, I do apologize. This video is a bit less polished than my other ones, but I feel like that gives us a little personal uh, connection, if you will, searching for these. Okay, so again, 1962 was a pretty warm November. Again, nothing record breaking, cooler than this November across much of the United States. But if we were to take a look at, for example, uh, portions of uh, or look at December and 1962, we would see that uh, we have quite a bit of a different story. It's below average and obviously that contrast between a 42 average and a 25 average is pretty stark and will catch anyone off guard. Okay, so let's plug this in and now into the composite anomaly and see what the results are showing for the whole country. Okay, so this is an example of a year or example of why these analogs are here may not be 100% accurate. If you look at this, November of 1962, it has Chicago in the below average conditions, right? And if you were to look at the accurate measurements taken from the office, November was above average. So again, the, definitely a bit more in invasive this cold air was, and the warm air was more expansive. Now, let's take a glance at the December that followed 1962, and notice this is what it showed. Below average across these locations, but I do want to show that this first mark right here is negative four degrees below average. So uh, the reason why it's uh, so uh, skewed, if you will, is because of this hot spot right here of almost 12 degrees above average. If it weren't for that, again, much of the east right here and or, yeah, eastern United States was chilly. And I just want to show you that, again, uh, if, you know, if we were to look at compare the November and December of this year, or yeah, 1962, not this year, but 1962, the year we have pulled up. Um, generally the same. It stayed warm across the west, cool across the east, cool across the east, warm across the west, and you may be looking at this and being like, this is way more significant. Again, not really because of the fact that this is by one degree, and this is by a factor of four, and the reason for that is because there was extreme heat across Hudson Bay at that time, for I don't know why, but there was. And... Notice that, again, 
it uh, doesn't always hold in the you know true in the way we'd like and as pretty as we'd like but definitely the point of this video is to t tell you that a cold december and a snowy december may be on top or may be on tap despite of what the climate prediction center is saying or the national weather service or weather channel and just to give you an example i mean let's take a look at uh, um, the forecast model so this is the gfs parallel a very very good model and notice it has a nor'easter potentially across uh, this weekend across the northeast which i'll be making a video on uh, today and later on in the day Notice that we do have a uh, a warmer pattern, right? But then we have that cold air definitely close. And notice, this is considered above average temperatures still. Snow across St. Louis. Again, this is very far out. This is only to demonstrate to you. Across the winter time, you don't need a cold winter in, in order to have a snowy one. Maybe across the south you do, you know, as it will take a greater uh, difference of anomaly to make it snow there. But notice, um, this, the, the, you know, the cold isn't um, absent completely. And if you were to take a look at some other models, like, uh, well, let's take a look at the GFS parallel from yesterday. Notice it showed a lot of variance, a lot of storm systems, and quite a bit more cold air at around this time. And uh, again, that has jumped around quite a bit, but notice that that just goes to show you the models are a bit inconsistent, right? But uh, if you were to take a look at the anomalies, which is 24 models, Notice they are definitely hinting towards a cooler head at around or cooler time frame anywhere past the 10th of December. So interesting, and we'll have to wait and see. But this is just kind of an educational, fun little video that I decided to make. Hopefully, you enjoyed. Hopefully, you learned something new. I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. See ya. Bye.